Hello everyone, my name is Armando uh, uh, Rotondi and I am the uh, co-director of the journal uh, Misena Beam, International Journal of Comparative Literature and Arts and also the president of the Cultural Association uh, IDEA IDEA in, uh, uh, in Italy. Uh, we are here for this artist talk with Valentina Temussi, Sanna Toivanen and uh, Oscar Valsecchi, uh, who are the artistic directors of Totum Teatre and performers, directors, uh, artists. And we are here to discuss the uh, topic of a creative process as a manifesto, and specifically the case studies of Totum Teatre as part of, the, of this series of presentation on the occasion of the publication of the volume Looking for Manifestos, um, uh, edited by uh, Professor Alessandra Troncone of the Academy of Fine Arts in, uh, in Naples, uh, as a special issue of Misena Beam uh, Journal, uh, with a contribution also by Totum Teatre uh, within this special issue. So I really welcome uh, this uh, special guest. So uh, welcome uh, Valentina, Sanna and, uh, and Oscar. Um, so um, first of all, if it's possible to uh, have a short introduction of what uh, Totum Teatre is uh, as a company based in Barcelona, what are the main uh, elements that characterize this company and also a little bit uh, you Please, all of you as a as artists with, we should Please. say that yes now we are totem but totem is not only the three of us uh, it includes for example at least avicha lampido and olivier becrio that started this project with us but not only them we like to say that Totem can be anyone because Totem is just a, a collective of artists and we created Totem uh, um, administratively, we gave it like a, um, a formal official um, structure in the sense that we registered, we registered the name but just to, to help and, and have a tool that anyone can use, anyone that shares the same interest and passion in, in, in a theater where movement is clearly the core. So I think the first thing I can say, and then I, I let Sam and also continue, is that we are not organized in a, in, in a pyramidal way. There's not a direct officially, there, there, is, there is just a platform, a net, that can be used and can be used as a platform or can be used as a, um, a legal entity or, or in any way that people interested in this kind of, of, of artistic way of expressing might be interested. So, so the, first core, the first core is the um... So the idea of collectiveness of artists who share the same vision, uh, and this vision, the core is the is the movement, basically movement theater and the idea of movement. Yes, I would I would just like to add that um, we are all basically individual artists. Uh, we work independently. We all have different companies or collectives, or uh, we work in different places. The teaching or or as acting or direct or directors so it was kind of we created this space so we have um like a community where we can help each other so we don't feel so alone so that's how it all got started basically oscar please yeah and yes yes to just to to add that to what they said my my uh, it's um yeah what he, he, he keeps us together is the movement phase or movement passion of um, doing theater through movement and not only like that but creating using the movement and the body as a tool so we, because i i think personally um, i'm sure i'm not the only one it's a it's a, a tool the body and movement it's it's a very powerful tool that can be used in the creation process and then um, that's i think what what brings us together we have that common passion 
And uh, uh, now I have two questions. The first one is directly related to what Oscar uh, said um, at the end. So uh, the idea of communicating through uh, movement. So how uh, how do you feel in this uh, in this specific area of theater where body and movement are the main way of communication? So the movement as a language. And the uh, and the other question that I will ask later is about the creative process. So what is your creative process, and why you feel that your creative process is your manifesto? But let's start with the idea of movement. So why movement as the, the main way of communication or the main way in, of creating meaning and language in your uh, in your specific kind of performing arts and theater? Um, I think it. it it's because it's movement is our training so we start we start from there from wanting to start our artistic researches and, and projects from uh, movement as a form of um, something that creates the ideas that help help us to really find what we want to do the the end the ending project is not forcibly movement, uh, in, meaning that we we don't like to label what we do just with say physical theater or or total theater or visual theater. We could end up doing a, a, a radio talk or a radio drama, but the thing is that we really believe that our body, so therefore our movement is the the first tool. So when we look for ideas and when we work on something, to us it's, it's like natural after all these years of training to start from the body, including the body, even look at, look for ideas through the body. Can, can I ask about also about the training? So also for the people who are watching this uh, this video about your specific training. Well, this is also really. Um, let's say the beginning of talking we share the same uh, training which is called corporeal mind not only because each one of us has a different journey and, and might have started somewhere else or might have continued with other training and then i left Dana and Oscar say specifically what but we all all share us and the other founding members of, of talking the uh, strong background in, in corporeal mind training, which is a, a method created by Etienne de Cru in France between 1930s and 1980s. So it's a long, long journey for him and, and for us because we studied with his assistance and uh, for many years. It's a beauty that can express a body in movement. So I think that was the first impact as a as a as a spectator. Then, as a performer, I could see that this 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 movement create like um, um it moves you some, from from inside. And then then I I think little by little with experience we develop a um, a sense of of a, Sorry, let, let me rephrase it. I think that after a while, that what was a superficial at the beginning, that beauty, that aesthetic beauty, I, I, there was something was something underneath that. And I think that the body it's a, it's a great, a powerful, like let's say recipient of emotional memory of experiences that one goes through. So. If, if you as an actor, as a creator, you start and you manage to, to reach down the inside of your, everything you live through and everything you experience, all your trauma, loves and the passions and, and things you went through life. And I think that's the power of creating with the body. More than creating um, using like an intellectual point of view. Um, because it comes, there's a, there's a trueness in the in the movement and in the body that um, it gives this powerful, I think, um, uh, result. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that uh, actually for me, when I started uh, with physical theater and movement many years ago, um, I didn't actually know anything about physical theater. I didn't know it existed. And I was doing theater, like a uh, normal text-based theater. But uh, I'm from Finland, actually, originally. So um, apart from theater, my other passion was traveling. And I was always like, how can I combine these two things? How can I travel and do theater? But since I only knew text-based theater, for me, it was like, I can't go all over the world and do theater in Finnish. Nobody will understand. So I was looking for other ways of, of, expression, of expression. And um, when I found out about movement, I was like, oh, yeah, of course, this is it. Like, this is a universal language. So. The, uh, in, in the issue of the journal about manifesto. So about the creative process as your manifesto, what is your creative process and why you feel that this one is your manifesto, the entire creative process? I, I think I, I start from saying it already that uh, we, we come from a training, from even a specific training, but we wanted to be open to anyone wanting to express through movement where movement was embedded in the creative process. So basically we, and we do it ourselves, no matter what we do and no matter what the ending project might be, uh, so different styles, uh, for example, like you see in the picture of, of, of this happening, we did a, a piece with masks and these masks were rats. So it was like working with uh, gigantic puppets in a way, even though the, the, the actor was inside or or we do pieces that are really closer to dance in the sense that we, we use a very stylized and evocative type of movement. And we might do, as I said before, radio drama or, or, or more text-based theater. But the, the, the thing that characterizes us and that may, and we see that it's our manifesto, the fact that our creative process is particular because it starts from the body. We use the body really as the first tool to research, to research what we want to do, to analyze the material, to develop it, to communicate between us. And also in our creative process, like in, in Totem, there isn't a real director, actor, producer, um, light designer. We have a very collective way of working which comes from the tradition of the ensemble and I think we, we use it very much in the creative process in, in a very uh, general way to the, all the elements all the technical elements of the performance and the production and the distribution and it's also something that in this idea of ensemble in this idea of, of group work but we also include the audience, our, the way we take care of how the audience will be part of our performance, will, will experience our performance. So all these elements are our manifesto and define what we do despite the final product. I'm particularly interested in uh, what you said about the audience. So the audience that is part of this experience. So what, uh, what are you looking in, in the, what the audience should experience usually in one of your work? Because we, <clears throat> we would love that the performance could feel the same thing that we feel as a, a, the audience will feel the same thing as 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 a performance. Because uh, especially through the, the creation, the creating process, we go through um, uh, we go through moments where we we can feel that we create a, a, a performance. It's not a rehearsal anymore. It's a little performance um, in the sense that it happens, and and as soon as as soon as you stop, it just um, it disappears like a performance. I would say you you go and see a show. It happens on the moment, 
and then it's gone. And then when it is left, what is left is the is the feeling of that. Is is the memory? Is the the impression that you 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 the, what you experienced? So on that base, we continue creating, like building up a structure. By by building up this again more structure and define movements and phrases, movement, we we go through more experience and and. Um, the, the work grows when, with when, us. It becomes, know. after days and weeks of performance, it becomes something really powerful for us, performing it. And we, we found it really difficult to try to transmit in just maybe one hour that experience. So we were not just looking at the performance itself. We would love that the, the, the public we just get all that experience and the, the emotions that we had through the process of creation and not just in the show. Do you, do you see what I mean? Um, how much is important the text? Because you work as an ensemble, you work in devising. So, he, but for example, also knowing a little bit uh, your uh, some of your work, there is also a kind of uh, literature in influence in some um, of your work. Maybe at, time, at times when we first started, um, unless this was my feeling outside, before Sodom and also inside Sodom, that at times we, 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 proceed, we proceeded without a text at all. So we proceeded through our training, our exercises to start uh, creating an imaginary and evocative word. But uh, we then felt that uh, keeping the writing completely away from what we do, it, it's a limit, it's a limitation, it's not uh, something that mm, on the contrary would, would make us travel with our imaginary world very far because ultimately um, we need a system, we need to, to improvise, we need to be inspired through movement, but then we need to, for each performance, to find a system. And we find this system if we can put names to what we do. So even if it's just describing what we do, or giving it names or categorizing and then putting it in order, uh, it's the only way to then really make, be sure that we are creating meaning and not only visual. Uh, and we're not only creating things that give a visual impact. I don't know if Sana wants to add to how we use text and our relationship with writing. Sometimes maybe we'll read a poem or short story that inspired us to start a project. So it all started from a text, for example. Um, or sometimes it just you know, or it's just, it's just a random idea. And then during the process, we feel like we want to say something also. So we find words, either we write it ourselves or we find something that touches us or inspires us. But so it's kind of just to find how is the text um, just more of the tools that we can use, but it's not, um, that we work from the text directly. It's just one of the many other tools that we have. So it depends on the project, if it has more, uh, more presence or less. We've done shows with no text. Actually in that show also, we had some words projected uh, on the wall during the performance. So there was, I mean, some text, but they were just uh, some random words and then the, there are shows that we have a lot, so it just depends kind of what is the, um, in this specific project, what is it that we really want to say, and then if we feel like it needs text, then we, we give it its space, but yeah, it's always, um, it's more, it's not about the text itself, it's more about us and the feeling and, and that gets back to the work with the with the body and how we try to we try to find what is it that we want to say with this piece 
Um, and then we try to find the connection to us, to our bodies and to that specific moment in, in our lives. And then from there, we create something together um, in dialogue with, with the whole collective. And then if we see, okay, and also the audience is present since the beginning of the creation, because we have to find what is the best way that we get to share what we're experiencing, experiencing to the audience. Um, maybe this time we will need text or we will need projections or we need nothing, just the actors and movement. So uh, it depends. Sometimes we feel um, like this time we need to say things out loud or sometimes we just need to use our body as, as if it was talking. So it's always different depending on the project. Uh, specific project uh, with your company, with Totum, that you uh, feel particularly important for you or that you want to share with the, uh, with the viewers of this, of this conversation? It's a new, new show, but it's not completely new. It's called uh, Reflejo, Reflejos, and it comes from a... Um, from a previous work we've done, which is a Quartetto Combinat that uh, we, we did uh, many years ago, but um, it kind of grew and it changed form. And um, now let's say we, we are mature enough to try to give it another, another, another try because we, we felt at the beginning it was a, it was a bit, um, it was a nice idea and then it went through different changes. Um, we left it aside for a while and then this, this, well, we wanted to do it again and we felt that um, it was, uh, it was the right time now and unfortunately due because of the COVID and because of other um, work that we each one of the artists had so we couldn't really make it happen but uh, yeah our our next project I think will be Reflejos I think because it, it, it reflects really this idea that the creative process is our manifesto because it's, it's the performance where we felt that what keeps us together working around this performance is the fact that we are more interested probably in the in the process than than the end. That's why we never get to the end. But this process of creation and research uh, is allowing us to find uh, new things to to experiment especially with the relationship with the audience because it's about the main main idea is about touching and 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 hugging embracing so becoming one with the other or becoming one with ourselves so of course the relationship with the other and with ourselves and this process is so physical and we're trying a physical way also to to have a, a response from the audience so find ways that they really feel this, this, this touch and they really feel how it can define and, and how it can describe different relationships and then it becomes a journey to the personal discovery through the encounter with the other so really it's a long process uh, but it's keeping us uh, very it, it's keeping our curiosity always alive and, and it keeps us together in this in this research I, I would just add to that that I think now especially more ever very uh, looking forward to continue with this project because this year since we haven't been able to touch people to touch others so now I think it will give a whole nother layer to this project just the just the need to touch and also we've been um, we haven't been able to rehearse because of the situation but we've been working on the project uh, and also we've gotten other ideas uh, just this year, for example, just the thought of 
not being able to touch, but having the, the need to touch another person and, and to be close and to hug. And this year, since it hasn't been possible that, so this is another new layer that we brought to this project this year. So it's uh, very current and very, <laughs> we really need to, to do this, I think more than ever. And I think another thing that I really enjoy with Totum is the workshops that we give. I think it also is a big part of what we do as uh, Oscar and Valentina already said that we really care about the, the creation process. So part of that is also giving the workshops. So we share the way we create with others and we get to see how other people experience that. And that's always teaching us also a lot. And just to be able to share it with others, I think it's very important. Uh, it's been very important for all of our creation processes. Thank you really a lot, uh, Sanna, Valentina and Oscar and Totum for this uh, wonderful conversation. So I was very happy um, to have you as a uh, guest for this talk and uh, thank you a lot uh, again. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Armando, thank you. Thank you.